to see you. We're glad you're here. The first Sunday of the new year, we put another year behind us. And, and I preached along those lines last week, and I talked about the year that's gone by. And uh, I want to give you something I believe the Lord's laid on my heart. If you'll turn to Philippians chapter number 3. I preached from this passage before many times in the past, but today I'm just going to lift out a phrase. Just going to lift out a phrase and an idea and kind of prepare us for the year ahead. You know, I, you, can, uh, you can adopt whatever kind of outlook you want to adopt. You can, you can get to gloom and doom, woe is me, if you want to. Or you can look to the future with eager anticipation, just uh, anticipating what God might do. And uh, we've seen the hand of God move in our church. And uh, we believe, I believe, by the way, if you believe that, if you, if you believe what I'm about to say, would you say, I believe the same God is still on the throne. Amen. Amen. And so we're looking forward to what he's going to do in the days ahead. If you have your Bibles, Philippians chapter 3, let's all stand in reverence to the reading of God's word. I'm just going to read one verse, verse 13. Philippians chapter 3, uh, verse 13, it says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before. Now, I want to lift out a phrase. Now, here's what, I want, here's what I hope we do. I want us to reach forth to those things which are before. But we can't do that unless we take care of what comes before that. Forgetting those things which are behind. And I, I want to preach for just a little while on the subject, putting the past behind you. Putting the past behind you. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for all that you give. And Lord, uh, we're thankful, Lord, that one day you loved us so much that you sent your Son to die for us. That he didn't stay dead, that three days later he rose again and, and, and later resent, ascended to the right hand of the Father where he ever lives to make intercession for us. Thank you for the salvation we have in Jesus Christ. Now as I stand here today, you know my need. And I pray that you'd supply that need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God, I ask you for a fresh anointing of the Spirit of God. I pray as the psalmist prayed, anoint my head with fresh oil. As the year lays ahead, I pray that you'd stir me up on the inside and give me something fresh. Give me something new. Give me something alive. Give me something real. Help me to preach as I've never preached. Help me to pray as I've never prayed. Help me to work as I've never worked in the days ahead. Because one of these days, Father, I realize I'm going to have to look on your face and give an account of my stewardship. And when I do it, I don't want to be ashamed. I want to do it with joy. Help me, Father, to do your will and be what you'd have me be. I pray for those who are here under the sound of my voice. I ask you that by the power of the Holy Ghost that you would speak to hearts. I, I pray for some that you'd, that you'd just do something God real today. God, uh, I ask you that you'd have your way, that you'd work. In Jesus' name, amen. Be seated. Now, I, I, as I said, I want to talk to you this morning on the subject, putting the past behind you. And, uh, you know, Edward Payson Powell said something like this. The old year has gone. Let the dead past bury its own dead. And the new year has taken possession of the clock of time. And all hell, the duties and possibilities of the coming 12 months. I believe that's what we ought to do. And you're, the, the year 2013 is already in the record book. It's already recorded. Uh, and what's past is past. And, and those of us who are here today, I want to say we can't live in the, in the past Reality, you know, in past reality, uh, we have to re live in present reality. We can't live with the relics of the past. We have to live in the reality of the present. Now, uh, there's, a, a, and that's exactly the uh, what a lot of people do. They, uh, they let their past. They live, you know, they, they live in the past. You can't live in the past, amen. You got, you have to move on. And you see, the past is either uh, is either a friend that inspires us. 
with good memories and things that are back there. The book of Exodus verse 13 verse 3 it says, Remember this day in which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by strength of the hand of the Lord brought you out of this place. And, and I want to I, I say to you, we should never forget the day that God saved us and washed us from our sin. Well, that needs to be there. We need to remember that part of it. But the past as well as being a friend that can inspire us, is also an enemy that can hinder us. And, you know, someone said that our churches are full of cripples who are paralyzed by grudges. Are you listening to me? Who are paralyzed by grudges and bitterness and sin and the tragedies of the past. Now, other, other people try to survive by, by reliving past successes. We can't do that. Amen. Hey, Hey, some of the greatest years we had, I've been here 16 years, and some of the greatest years that I can remember having, we had a lot of good years, but 2010, 2011, and 2012 were great years, and, and we seen the hand of God move in a great way. Uh, one by one, we tried to do everything that we knew to help, uh, or to not to hinder growth, and God blessed it. But we can't live in the past. We have to live in the present. Amen. Amen. And, and, and uh, we can't relive that. But we don't want to be paralyzed. We don't want to be like Jesus said, having put our hand to the plow, we look back. There's only one way to look, and that, if you're going to plow a straight furrow, there's only one way to look if you're going to get the kind of work done you ought to get done, and that's to look forward and just keep on plowing, amen? And now, it's possible that there's some here that are in bondage to their past, and you're enslaved to your past, and, and you need to be set free from your past. And, and, and you know, you need to know, hear the words of Paul this morning, forgetting those things which are behind. And, and, and I want to give you at least, I want to give you at least three things that I believe we need to put behind us as we look to 2014. Number one, we need, you need to put your past sins behind you. You need to put your past sins behind you. Now, uh, when I say that, uh, past sins and failures can be a ball and chain and, and, and it, to the present and the future. And, and the devil loves to throw the past up in your face and, and, and use it to depress you and discourage you and defeat you. Now, nobody knows that any better than me. Hey, you, and, and that's what he'd like to do to you. He'd like you, he'd like you to keep looking over your shoulder and looking back and, say, and, and, and thinking about all that's back there. Hey, listen, you don't need to worry about what's back there. You need to turn your face toward the future and don't look back. Amen. Amen. And there's some things. And by the way, I, I want to tell you, uh, and I'll probably say this again somewhere along the line. There's, there's skeletons in everybody's closet. And you, what the devil does, he likes to get in there and just kind of rattle them around. Amen. <laughs> and, and not let you forget them. And, and, and we need to not worry about the sins of our past. And here are two reasons why. Listen. Our past sins can haunt us. Hey, the devil wants to use that to haunt you. He wants you to, if he can, he wants to keep you thinking about it. Are you listening to him? He, <laughs> he wants to keep it in the forefront of your mind, and, and he doesn't want you to. He doesn't want you to forget it. <laughs> now I'm going somewhere with this, so stay with me, with you. Praise your brother. Hey, hey, he wants you to live your whole life looking over your shoulder. You can't do that. You got to forget what's back there. He said, forgetting those things which are behind. Hey, don't be controlled. So many people that I know have, have a little thing called guilt. And they're controlled by what's back in the past. And they can't live in the future because of what, what's in their past. And, and, and you need to just, you need to get rid of it because your past sins can haunt you. Let me give you a second thing. Second thing is, and, and by the way, that's the devil's job. He wants to remind you of it. I'll, I'm, I'll probably say that again in a minute. But our past sins can also hinder us. Now when I say that, 
The devil's a master throwing the past in your face, and he loves to replay that, that thing over and over again in your mind. And uh, he, he loves to do anything that he can to keep you from serving God. He'll say things like, uh, how can you serve God after what you did? Uh, uh, you're a wicked person. How can you ever call yourself a Christian, much less serve God? And there are people sitting in churches who feel like they can never be used of God because of what they've done in the past, and they hesitate to get involved because they feel that they're not worthy, and their past sin and their past failure only haunts them, not only haunts them, but it also hinders them from enjoying the things of God and being all that they can be for the Lord. I know people... Hey, that, that are sitting right now say, in, in churches and saying, God can never use me. I can never be affected because of what's in my path. Hmm. I, I, I know where I'm going, and I, I, I got to wait till I get there. Amen. Amen. <laughs> can I say this to you? Listen close to what I'm about to say. If you're haunted and hindered by your past, I want to share something with you. And I, I preached not long ago on the subject failure is not final. And failures need not be final, and failures need not be fatal. Uh, you, you may have failed God, and you've committed terrible sin. And, and by the way, are you listening to me? Is it, it, listen to what I'm about to say to you. All sin is terrible. Amen. Amen. And, and you might have committed, and you might have literally looked at, and, and you've done something in the past that you're deeply ashamed of. But if you confess that sin to God, you know what God did when you confessed it? He forgave it. Amen. Amen. Hey, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and clean us from A-L-L -L, all unrighteousness. When you bring it to him and say, I've missed the mark, I've sinned, I've messed up. You know what God does? He takes the blood of Jesus Christ and he cleanses you of all sin. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and, and, and that's where people are. Hey, what did God do with your sin? Well, the Bible says in, in Psalm 103 verse 12, he said, he's cast it as far as the east is from the west. Never to be remembered again. <laughs> well, you say, preacher, what do you, well, I'll tell you what he did with it. Hey, do you, now that's a great analogy as far as the east is from the west. Do you realize if you start, if you're north and you, you'll go, you start going south, eventually you'll make a curve and you'll be going north again. But when it comes to east and west, if you start out going east, <laughs> you're always going east, Amen. <laughs> You're never going west, not one time. And, and what he's saying is he's taken your sins, he's separated them as far, uh, as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered again. And, and you don't have to be hindered or haunted by your past failures. You don't have to be hindered or haunted by, your, by, it, by what's in your past because God's already taken care of that. Amen. Amen. I like what Corey, Corey Tin Boom, I, I don't know if any of you have ever read any of that. When I first got saved, I'd seen the movie The Hiding Place. And some of her books that she'd written, and and she in, in one of her books she talked about the uh, she talked about how that uh, some things happened in the ocean, and and she gave an illustration. But she said in the end of it, she said, she said, when I got saved and I experienced forgiveness, she said, God took my sins out to the deepest part of the ocean and cast them in. And when He cast them in, He put a sign: no fishing allowed. Amen. <laughs> Hey, devil, you know, devil's got a long, he's trying to fish those babies back up. Amen. Hey, but God said, no, that's not the way it works. And I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done. Hey, there's, if there's one thing that you need to put behind you in 2014, you need to take those sins that haunt you and those sins that hinder you and tell the devil, I'm not going to allow that anymore because God said if I would confess them that he would forgive them and I'm taking him at his word and they're covered by the blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. And, and you may be here today and you're hindered and haunted by, by, your, by your past sins. You need to give it up. Today's a new day. And, and you need to turn your face toward the goal and, and keep marching. Amen. Amen. I, I like what uh, Micah said. I was talking to a guy one day. And he said something about your sin, about sin. And I said, my Bible says God's uh, cast them in, he's cast them, he separated them as far as the east and from the west, and he's got it, he put them in the depths of the sea. He said, I don't think it says depths of the sea. 
Oh, it does. Deep as far. Micah 7, 19, he will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. And he will cast their sins into the depths of the sea. And, and you see, God forgives. And he cast our sins into the deepest ocean. And if you're here today, that's what, that's what he did with yours. And you don't need to be hindered or haunted by the sins of your past. Number two, you should put your past sorrows behind you. Now, when I say that, I've, <laughs> I've been saved 35 years. And 32 years of that, I've been a pastor. Don't know how that works. <laughs> Don't ask me, all right? <laughs> but I found out that some of the worst hurts you'll ever get <laughs> will come from people who call themselves Christians. Amen. <laughs> hey, the church crowd's going to hurt you worse than the world. Amen. Amen. <laughs> They're going to talk about you worse. They're going to lie on you more. This, this, let me put it out there. And, uh, well, I'll wait. But, and the past can hurt us. And when I think about 2013, <laughs> I've been slandered and I've been lied on. And you know what I did? Nothing. <laughs> Not only that, I've been betrayed. Amen. You know, you remember in the garden when Judas wanted to single out Christ, what he, he came and he kissed him on the cheek. Jesus said, Betray thou the Son of Man with a kiss. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. In 2013, I found out how, how Jesus felt. And I'm not going to go into detail. Bless you, Lord. But I can tell you this. That's all got to be in the past. Amen. I got to put that. Listen, there's only one way I can make it. I'll tell you what I want. Hey, I'd like to get in the flesh. I was raving one time and somebody said something. I said, yeah, but I'm carnal. <laughs> and I'd like to get in the flesh. I really would. But I can't do it. And, and, and so when it comes to past sorrow and when it comes to past hurt and when it comes to all that stuff and, and you know in 2014 I'm going to get to a place where I'm not going to talk to anybody about any of it. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. If what they get they're going to have to get from somebody else because they ain't getting it from me. Amen. Hey next time they see me in the grocery store and, and, and they want all the, de the gruesome details I, I, well I've already cut that off but I'm not giving them any. Amen. And, and, and so what we need to do is cleanse our hearts of past sorrows. Now, if there's any bitterness, if there's any hard feelings, you know what we got to do? We got to get them out. <laughs> now, it's hard for me. By the way, it's hard for me to say. But I'm going to tell you, a root of bitterness growing up in the heart, you know what it'll do? It'll choke everything else out. Amen. To where nothing else, nothing else will grow there. <laughs> it's just like kudzu. You, some of you heard me use that. Uh, kudzu, uh, from up where I live, you know, that used to be big oak forest on, on, on the uh, uh, rivers on one side, big oak forest on the other. If you drive 61 up in that area now, all there is is kudzu. It's choked out everything else. And in, in, in its growing season, it'll grow several inches a day. Until finally it has taken over everything. And, that, and if you go up there in the spring and summer, all you see is kudzu. And that's why a root of bitterness is in the heart of an individual. If you allow a root of bitterness to grow up in your heart, it'll choke out everything else. Amen. And, and, and that root of bitterness, you, somehow you've got to dig it up. And you've got to, hey, by the way, have you ever run into a plant the only way, by the way, the only way you can kill that stuff, you've got to dig it up. <laughs> That and multiflora rose, amen. <laughs> you country folks don't know what, if you're not country, you don't know what that is. And, and a root of bitterness has to be dug up. 
And it has to be dealt with. And it has to go. Because if you allow it to grow, if you allow it, will take over everything that's good. And there will and they'll not be anything good that will ever come out of your heart or life. And you've got to get rid of it. And you know there's only one way to get rid of a root of bitterness. You dig it up, but you know how you do it. Spiritually. It's, oh, one little word. It's a hard word. Forgive. Amen. When you get to the place where you can play for that bunch that slandered you and lied on you and betrayed you, <laughs> you're going a long way. God, amen. And 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 I, in 2014, I don't care who you are, and I don't care what it is. We need to get rid of it, and that root of bitterness needs to go. And, and you need to cleanse your heart of past sorrows. And the only part, uh, the only way to do it, uh, to, to get out, rid of a root of bitterness, is to forgive. Amen. But you also need to clear your heart of past sorrows. You say, preacher, what's the difference? Well, let me give you the difference. <laughs> An old fellow was out plowing one day on one side of a fence and his neighbor walked up and he was struggling with those reins. He was plowing with a mule. And he was having a hard time getting that old mule to do exactly what he wanted him to do. <coughs> and <laughs> so the neighbor walked up and offered him a word of advice. He said, he said, sir, he said, I'm not trying to get in your business, but he said, I've been watching you plow. And he said, I'll tell you, if you would just say, G and haul to that mule, you could get him to do a whole lot more because he's trained that way. And he said, well, he said, I know you're right. But he said, about five years ago, that mule kicked me and I haven't spoken to him since. <laughs> are, you, are, are you feeling me? When you get to the place where you can't speak to people that you went to church with for a number of years, there's something wrong. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and you need to clear all that stuff out. You need to get rid of it. And, and you need to clear your heart and you need to cleanse your heart. And, and there are a lot of us that in 2013, we've had sorrow of another kind. We've lost people that we love. And, and, and when, I'm when I'm talking about the sorrow of the past, I want, I want to remind you of one thing. I preached my grandmother's funeral on Thursday. And I used the text in 1 Thessalonians. Sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Now what that means is we don't, yes, we're sorrow. We, we have sorrow. And, and, and it's in there. It's hard. But we sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Because we have hope. Hey, in that, in that text, it, it gives you the hope of the believer. Number one, there's a hope of his return. One of these days, Jesus is coming. Amen. Praise God. Number two, there's a hope of the resurrection. Amen. <laughs> hey, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and the trump of God. Yes. Are you listening? Here it is. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. <laughs> and we... Number three, there's the hope of reunion. And we who are, to, are alive and remain shall be caught up together, here's the words, with them. Amen. Oh, you know what's going to happen one of these days? There's going to be a great getting up day. And if I'm alive when Jesus comes, boom, I'm going to be with them. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So I, even though there's sorrow, even though we're, we're torn to pieces, and even though there's a hole in our heart that, that it seems like uh, will never be filled, I'll tell you what, uh, there's great hope for those of us that know Jesus Christ and we sorrow not even as others which have no hope. <laughs> I laid my 93 year old grandma to rest. Got to preach to my entire family. Five generations. I got to give them the gospel and tell them if they want to ever see grandma again they're going to have to get saved. If you're here today, if you, you, you that sin and that sorrow, I know it's tough. 
you got to put it behind you. Amen. And keep on going. Amen. Let me give you the third thing. <sighs> we need to put our past sins behind us. We need to put our past sorrows behind us. But we also need to put our past successes behind us. Say, preach, what do you mean? Well, when you think about it, I've already said this. We can't live in the relics of the past, but in the reality of the present. And, and real success is, is doing what will last. I'm not talking about success the way the world looks at it. But real success is doing what will last. And you realize that only what we do for Christ is going to last. Only one life will soon be passed. Are you listening? And only what's done for Christ will last. Hey, when this thing's done, it's not going to matter what kind of a job you had or what kind of an education you had or how much money you had in the bank. Because, by the way, all that stuff's just going to get burned up. Amen? The only thing that's going to matter is what did you do for Jesus in this life? That's the way everybody, that's the way everybody, that's, that's how he's going to judge us all. And if you're here, uh, past, that's the way past success is. And here's, what, here's three things we need to do, and I'm going to close real quick. Listen to me. We need to celebrate what's been done. Amen. They said, preach, what do you mean? Well, praise God for every victory. Praise God for every blessing. Amen. Praise Him for everybody that was saved. Praise Him for everybody that joined the church. Praise Him uh, that, uh, for all the people that have been reached to uh, enlarge His kingdom. And by the way, we're not only reaching people right here on Campbell's Creek, but we're reaching around the world with our World Missions Program, and we're reaching people for Jesus Christ here at home and abroad. And you know what we ought to do? As we look at 2013, we ought to praise God because of everything that He has done. Amen. Amen. God. And I'm going to tell you, this has been a hard year for, uh, for some of us, but he, there's some things, there's some good things he's done. <laughs> Let me give you a second thing. We need to anticipate what can be done. Now, we want to celebrate the blessings of last year, but we want to anticipate all that he can do in the coming year. Amen. And, and, and <laughs> <laughs> when I was growing up and I developed a bad attitude my mom used to now I knew what she meant when she said this she'd say son you need an attitude adjustment <laughs> now I had an old country mother and when she said that there was something she's getting ready to thump me with amen <laughs> Now, by the way, right now, here today, now I'm not, by the way, I'm not going to thump any of you, all right? Yes. Some of you need an attitude adjustment. You need to get rid of that gloom and doom and woe is me. Amen. Oh, we're going down the tomb. <laughs> like an old witch in The Wizard of Oz. Ah! <laughs> no, that's not where we're at, by the way. And you need to anticipate what, what great thing we could do for Jesus. You know, when I look forward to 2014, I, I think of the spiritual growth that we could experience. I think of the good thing. I, listen, that, what's by, it's back here. I can't do anything about it. Amen. What's past is past. And it's got to stay there. Right. By the way, the devil's going to try to dig it up every time he can. Amen. <laughs> He's going to try to haunt us and hinder us if he can. But we don't need to let him do that. Amen. Are you listening to me? And if you're here today, you need to anticipate what you can do for Jesus Christ. Hey, hey, don't think about what's back there. Think about what the new year holds. Think about what 2014 could be like if every person in Big Bottom Missionary Baptist Church would sell out to Jesus Christ and say, I want to I wanna work more than I've ever worked. I want to pray more than I've ever prayed. I want to do more than I ever did for Jesus Christ in the year ahead. I'll tell you what, we could turn Campbell's Creek and Canola City and Charleston upside down if just a few people would get a mind to work for God. Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. And if you're here today, you need to anticipate what can be done. But then lastly, you need to 
elevate what should be done. Say, so, preacher, what do you, what's all these words? Elevate, anticipate, celebrate. Well, what I'm talking about, you need to prioritize your life. Amen. You, need to put, you need to put first things first. And sometimes the things that God, sometimes we push things that should be first priority back on, they get pushed back. Hey, you need to make prayer a priority. You need to make uh, visitation and soul winning a priority. You need, to, you need to prioritize your life. And the things which will count for Jesus Christ need to be put in the forefront. And you need to say today, I want to elevate what should be done. And today, as I start out in the first Sunday of, of 2014, I, I say that I want, to, I want to prioritize my life and I want to live 2014 uh, closer to the Lord Jesus Christ than I've ever lived before. Amen. That's good. That's good. Yes. Oh, yes. But you see, Paul said, I can't be controlled by my past. Forgetting those things which are behind. You can't be controlled by your past sins. Because if you do, they'll hinder you and haunt you. You can't be controlled by your past sorrows. You need to, clean, you need to cleanse them and you need to clear them. You can't be controlled by your past successes. Can't live in the past. Hey, you need to celebrate what God's done, anticipate what God will do, and elevate to priority those things that should be done. Amen. Praise God. Hey, that's, that's what you need to do in 2014. Bow your heads with me if you will.